imagine we have an AC source. So when we say AC source, it is a source that produces an alternating current or a current whose direction oscillates back and forth. And here is our galvanometer. So if we directly connect an AC source to our galvanometer, and assuming that this galvanometer can handle the amount of current that this AC source can produce. So imagine this is the scale of the galvanometer. Initially, when current flows this way, then this needle will be deflected this way. However, after one full cycle, the AC source will reverse the direction of the current. So after some time, the current will flow in a reverse direction therefore this needle here will be deflected on the opposite direction so the galvanometer can read the amount of current that passes through it assuming that the oscillation coming from the AC source is very slow or in other words the frequency of the AC source is very small so let's just assume that it is in the order of 0.1 Hertz however if our AC source has a very high frequency for example, around 60 hertz. Then if this is our galvanometer, our galvanometer will just record the average value of the fluctuation it can read. So it actually settles to zero because it reads the average value of the current that it detects. Here, we have an AC source. So at a very short period of time, the current moves this way and then all of a sudden it moves this way. So th this very rapid fluctuation is not clearly read by the galvanometer because it happens so fast that only the average value of the current is being recorded in the galvanometer. That's why the needle of the galvanometer usually settles to a zero value. Though in reality, the needle is actually flickering to a high value and to a low value. But since due to the fast motion of charges, it settles down to its average value which is the zero level value value. So no matter what frequency of the AC source we feed into the galvanometer, we must be able to measure at least the average voltage based on the AC peak voltage. So if we try to plot the voltage coming from the AC source, for example, the y-axis denotes the voltage level that the AC source delivers and the x-axis denotes the time. So the voltage level that the AC source delivers looks like this. At certain moment, it goes to a peak value and then to a zero value and then a lower value, a peak value and then a lower value and so on. We denote peak voltage as V sub P. The voltage coming from the AC source behaves like a sine wave. So first, let's try to cut off this portion and let's redesign our circuit. So again, this is our AC source and this is our galvanometer. In order for this galvanometer to function as a voltmeter, we will add a multiplier resistor in this circuit. So just like all galvanometer, it has an internal resistance R sub M or meter resistance and it has a full deflection current represented by I sub Fs. So apparently the voltage signal that this galvanometer receives looks like this, a sine function. Let's restrict the current into one directional flow by using a diode. So at this region, let's connect a diode. And once we achieve this, if I try to plot the voltage across the galvanometer, so when the current flows in this way, the voltage across the galvanometer increases. And then after some time, after half cycle, it goes down and reaches zero. During the second half cycle, the current flows in this way, but it's being blocked by the diode. So the galvanometer won't detect anything so during the second half cycle the voltage recorded by the galvanometer will remain zero so let's just assume that this is the second half cycle but it's not actually recorded or detected by the galvanometer after one full cycle the ac source will then draw the current in this direction and then the galvanometer detects the usual behavior of voltage 
and the process goes on. When your voltage source behaves like a sine function, it is not usually described by a peak voltage. Rather, it is usually described by what we call the RMS value of the voltage. So to derive a relationship between the peak voltage and the RMS value of the voltage, I'll begin writing the equation for voltage in the form of a sine function. This curved here will be represented by a function V and it's represented by a sine function. I'm supposed to write amplitude here but apparently based on the diagram, this amplitude is the peak voltage and sine theta. Now, I want to convert this theta in terms of the x-axis, which is time. So, recall that the connection between angle and time is the angular velocity. Angular velocity is equal to angular displacement divided by time. So, I can actually convert this argument in terms of time. Now, this omega here is angular velocity, but when you have a repeating pattern, this can also represent this what we call angular frequency. Omega can also represent angular frequency, and the relationship between angular frequency and spatial frequency is this relationship. Angular frequency is equal to 2 pi times spatial frequency. So, I'll just replace this with spatial frequency. though it's not really necessary. Now, the general definition of any RMS is this. RMS stands for root mean squared. So if you have a function x of t, and you want to find the root mean squared of this function, you have to integrate this function from 0 to a 1 complete cycle and then divide it to that period. Remember that the time requires for a 1 complete cycle is 1 period. Since this is root mean squared, you have to square this function and then get its square root. So again, the definition of root mean squared is that you have a function x of t, then you squared it and then you integrate it over one period, then divide it with the value of that period, then get the square root. So applying this definition to our function, we have V RMS equals square root of 1 over period, integral of peak voltage squared sine squared 2 pi ft integrated with respect to time over the interval of one period. So I can move the constant out of the integral sign. Vp squared over t integral of t0 sine squared 2 pi ft dt. Let me rewrite this equation here and I'll just focus first on the integral inside. So let me rewrite this integral. Now this sine squared function inside is actually equal to I made a derivation showing the relationship between sine square theta and 1 half quantity 1 minus cosine 2 theta. Please watch that video. The link is in the description box below. I use complex analysis or Euler's formula to derive the relationship. So evaluating the integral, I have the first one is easy to integrate. We have 1 half. The integral of 1 is the integration variable t. Minus the integral of cosine, which is wait, 1 half times this term, which is 1 over 4 pi ft times negative sine 4 pi ft. Evaluated from 0 to 1 period. Now notice that whatever the value of the bounds of your integral, since this is multiplied with 4, it always results to an even value of n pi. So here we have n pi and n is always multiplied to 4 and this forces the argument to be a multiple of 4 n pi. So since sine of n pi where n is always an even number, this will result to a numerical value of 0. So I'll just end up with this term which is equal to 1 half 
period because this is actually one half t minus one half times zero so one half t so i'll plug this back here inside the square root sign i'll end up with vrms equals square root of vp square over period times this relationship which is one half t period cancels out so i'll end up with vrms equals vp over square root of 2. So this is the relationship between RMS voltage and the peak voltage when your voltage behaves in a sinusoidal manner. Now since we have this relationship between the RMS voltage of an AC source to its peak voltage, let's go back to our half-wave rectifier circuit. So let me draw the voltage signal that the galvanometer detects. So this is V and this is time. This is our peak voltage. So during the first half cycle, the voltage increases to a peak value V sub P and then it goes down. Then after some time, after it reaches zero, it, it reverses direction. But since there's a diode blocking it, the galvanometer will not detect anything. So for one whole cycle or one period, this is the voltage signal that the galvanometer detects. And we already emphasized that usually for a very high frequency, what the galvanometer shows is just the average value of this voltage signal. So at this point, we have period divided by two. This is half the cycle. So if we would like to calculate the average voltage that the galvanometer detects, and remember that galvanometer operates as if there's a direct current passing through it. So let's also label this as V sub DC because this is the voltage that the galvanometer detects. We just have to get the average value of this voltage from the entire interval, though this second half cycle is just zero. So I'll integrate it from zero to one period. And again, we represent the behavior of the voltage signal coming from AC source as a sine function. So it has an amplitude of V sub P and it behaves like a sine function. So there's a sine two pi FT argument here. And to get the average over one period, we divide it with one period. The voltage signal that the galvanometer detects is actually DC, but when you have an AC source, this is just the average value of what the AC source delivers. And we try to integrate this term to get such voltage signal. So going back to the figure, so 1 over period quantity. I'll try to divide the integration from 0 to t over 2, then t over 2 to t. So from 0 to t over 2, we have this voltage signal which is represented by a sine function. Plus integration from t over 2 to t, but this time, since this signal is being blocked by the diode, the galvanometer records zero value for this. So I'll just put zero here times dt. So obviously this entire term is zero. So I'll put this outside the integral sign since this is constant. t over to zero sine two pi ft dt of negative two pi ft cosine two pi ft evaluated from 0 to t over 2. Notice that the argument of the first cosine here is multiplied with pi. So cosine pi of something. This is equal to negative 1. On the other hand, cosine 0 is always 1. So I'll end up with... 2 over 2 pi f. This cancels out. Remember that frequency is also equal to 1 over period. So I can replace f here with 1 over t. This cancels out. 
So, this is a relationship with the voltage detected by the galvanometer, which is just the average voltage signal it receives from the AC source. In terms of peak voltage, this is equal to peak voltage divided by pi. If I replace pi with 3.14, I'll have 0 0.318 Vp. So let me rewrite this equation here. I want to write this equation in terms of VRMS because oftentimes AC sources are represented by root mean squared voltage. So recall the relationship between VRMS and V sub P. The root mean squared voltage is equal to peak voltage divided by square root of 2. So if I plug this relationship here, then I'll now have another equation for the average voltage detected by the galvanometer which is equal to, so I have 0 0.318 Vp but Vp is obviously equal to square root of 2 times VRMS. So I have 0 0.45 VRMS. So I now have another relationship between V sub DC or the average voltage detected by the galvanometer and VRMS of the AC source. So recall our equation for calculating the multiplier resistance for a DC voltmeter. It's actually R sub S equals sensitivity times the range. minus the galvanometer resistance or R sub M or the meter resistance. So sensitivity based on definition from our previous video is equal to 1 over the full scale deflection current when you have a DC voltage passing through the galvanometer. And the range is just V or the voltage being read by the galvanometer minus the meter resistance or the galvanometer resistance. Now for an AC voltmeter, your V here is actually the average voltage coming from the AC source. So if I replace V here with V average, so again I'll have 1 over IF full scale deflection current times V average in terms of VRMS will then become 0.45 VRMS minus R sub M. Now recall that the definition of sensitivity if you have a DC source is equal to 1 over full scale deflection current. This time notice that it has now a new factor. It has a 0 0.45 factor. The same sensitivity has now a factor of 0 0.45. Therefore for an AC source the galvanometer has now a sensitivity equal to 0 0.45 times the sensitivity when you have a DC source. So this is now the new sensitivity for the galvanometer if you have an AC source. And again, this is your equation for the multiplier resistor when you have an AC source represented by a root mean squared voltage VRMS. So as an example, Calculate the value of multiplier resistor so that a galvanometer with full-scale deflection current 1 milliamp and internal resistance of 500 ohms can read an AC source with root mean square voltage of 10 volts. So first, let's write the equation for the multiplier resistance of an AC voltmeter. So we have 0 0.45. VRMS divided by the full scale deflection current of the galvanometer minus the internal resistance of the galvanometer. So plugging in the values, R sub S equals 0 0.45 times 10 volts divided by 1 milliamps minus the internal resistance of the galvanometer. And this results to R sub S equals 4000 ohms. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!